Hi and welcome back to another episode of Viewer Mail. We received this 2060 RTX 2060 from Michael who reached out after seeing very high temperatures on his card and after checking what's actually going on. It seemed like liquid metal was applied to this card and after doing a bit of research it also appeared that the cooler is made of aluminium. So this could be be some nasty damage on the card. We will try to investigate this, check out what kind of damage we can find on the card and if there is a way to repair it. So ideally we can return a repaired card back to him. Hetzner is a reliable hosting partner with a huge passion for IT. They run their own high-tech data center parks in Helsinki, Finland and in German cities Nuremberg and Falkenstein. They also provide their customers worldwide and simple solutions for complex issues. By merging its capabilities in cutting-edge technology, attractive pricing and competent and skilled customer service, Hetzner also increased its market share both inside and outside Europe. As one of the leading hosting providers, they offer self-developed high-tech products such as dedicated, managed and cloud servers. Aside from these products, you can also get high-quality storage products, which are available everywhere at any time and of course a variety of other services. Check out the link below for Hetzner's detailed portfolio. Investigating the outside appearance first, I cannot see anything unusual. Of course, we have some, some dust in there, but we can clean that off later. That should not be the cause for the temperatures he's seeing though because it's not like a defective card but he was reporting temperatures of like constant 100 degrees celsius and throttling on the gpu so we definitely have to open this up so that's the prime example of having some liquid metal damage between your cooler and gpu but honestly speaking the gpu area itself is or shouldn't be damaged actually. So it's more the cooler that's affected. We will look at that in a second, but just the GPU area, at least we can see like right next to it, we have some reddish stuff. So it should be some kind of protective paint or like nail polish something. So at least the SMDs around the GPUs were protected. On top, we have a little bit of liquid metal spill, but not too bad, like that's actually all right. Not great, but that should not cause any kind of like damages or anything. Looking at the cooler though, you can see that is some proper damage and it won't just help to wipe this off because the black stuff you can see on here that indicates that the aluminium underneath is permanently damaged. So I will have to think of something yeah, over the next days how I can kind of rescue, how I can repair this cooler. But we can see there is some liquid metal still left on the top part. But on the bottom part all this black stuff we can see this is where the gallium ate all its way through the aluminium. The reaction between aluminium and gallium is actually quite interesting phenomenon and we will quickly talk about this. It's a bit of material science but I think it's still quite interesting. So what's happening here is called grain boundary diffusion and that's also something that occurs just as far as I know mainly with gallium and aluminium. So what happens is if you look at steel or aluminium as metals under a microscope then you can see the crystal, the crystal structure which is basically a lot of tiny areas that have a specific crystal direction. So for example one area is pointed in this direction when you look at the crystals and then right next to it you will have it pointed in this direction. This happens during the solidification of the material so after you melt it and you do the solidification again, then you will have all those different areas, like tiny areas with different crystal orientation. And the area between this orientation is called the, like the boundary, the grain boundary, and the gallium can eat its way, it's diffusing inside this grain boundary. And over a lot of time, this could be just hours actually, there will be enough gallium in between those grains, so those areas that have a specific crystal structure or crystal direction, they are called the grain, and in between you have the grain boundary. And the gallium will just place itself, it will diffuse into the grain boundary, causing basically the aluminium to fall apart. And in addition to this, there is also the recrystallization of aluminium, which is also interesting because usually this only appears at like, like 600 degrees Celsius. So if you bend 
metals back and forth several times at the, the part of the bend, it will harden because you basically, you rip apart the crystal structure all of the time. So you create a ton of those grain boundaries. And if you want to soften the metal again to create new grains, then you will usually have to heat it up to like 700 degrees Celsius. But this recrystallization also occurs with gallium at room temperature if you put it on aluminium. Well, it occurs on the aluminium if you put on the gallium. But that is causing some grains that have sizes of like a millimeter or two millimeters. And usually it's like 100 times smaller. And those huge crystals can cause the, the surface to pop up. That's why it often looks like very brittle. So the grain boundary diffusion is causing the, the embrittlement itself. But then at the same time, you have the grains like growing in size because of the recrystallization. And that's basically causing the aluminum to just like fall apart and also grow in itself at the same time. That's why it usually looks this nasty. Looking at the entire picture, like all the damage we can see, obviously the GPU should be the most important because even if the cooler is damaged, there's always a chance or a way to get a replacement, but for the GPU, definitely more difficult. So we will try first to just clean the entire... Makita? Seems like... <laughs> she does not agree. Okay, we will clean the GPU area. The first step would be to just remove the plastic frame that should just sit loose on top of the GPU. And after that, I guess with at least rubbing alcohol or just maybe full out acetone, clean the entire area. After the first process of cleaning just with alcohol, it looks actually quite okay. I'm still going to use acetone now to just remove the like last residues because there's some bits I cannot get removed. And also just I think it's going to be better to reapply the isolation layer. On the other hand though, with the cooler, I'm not quite sure. This looks like it's a proper damage. As expected, because this is just going all the way down into the material itself, you just cannot wipe this off. So that's a permanent damage, but I will grab the cooler, go to Grizzly, and we will see what we can do with this thing. I first continued cleaning the entire GTX 2060 because I just wanted to remove everything, also the red stuff around the GPU. My assumption is that this is Thermal Grizzly TG Shield, which can be removed with acetone and also wiping everything off, I could find additional like metal particles in there. And I guess those are residues of the nickel plating of the cooler, because just looking at it, like how shiny and reflective it is, it's definitely not aluminum and aluminum would have looked different at least after the contact with the gallium. Now continuing with the cooler. And even though we already wiped everything off, tried to clean it as well as possible, we still have those tiny black particles on there and they are kind of a mixture of aluminium residues and also an aluminium and gallium alloy. And those are actually not really a problem, but if you scratch this off, at least in theory, there could also still be some pure gallium left underneath. And as we know that gallium will cause issues in contact with aluminium, I definitely wanted to avoid to have any kind of residues in there because our milling machine, at least, just talking about the table where we clamp the, the cooler onto is also made out of aluminium. So I just wanted to scrape off as much as possible to avoid any kind of gallium residues in there because it would be a potential danger to the CNC mill. After clamping on the cooler to the CNC mill, I defined a field of a size of 50 to 42 millimeters size. And obviously we wanted to maintain or keep as much as possible of the original cooler because taking off too much material would cause other problems later because we are going to change the height of the cooler and we're also taking off potential mass which is needed to distribute the heat within the cooler. So we first started only milling off 0.1 millimeter to get an even surface. And then we just wanted to continue with 0.5 millimeter steps. And already after the first step, so just 0.5 millimeter total, we figured out that this is already enough. We could not see any kind of additional residues, like all the black stuff was gone of the gallium corrosion. And as you can see, that's a pretty clean aluminum surface. And yeah, that was just enough. 
With the fact that we milled off about 0.5 millimeter of the cooler, it also means that we have to adjust other heights, such as these standoffs that contain the threads, because in the stock condition, the GPU will have contact to the surface, you will have contact with the VRM, for example, on this side or with the memory on these surfaces, with thermal pads in between, two millimeter thickness, but also the PCB has contact to these standoffs. So I had to shorten them as well by 0.5 millimeter, already did that, and now I'm going to add new thermal pads. As I said before, previously 2.0 millimeter, and now we are going to add minus pad 8 with 1.5 millimeter thickness on the memory and also on the VRM. Then I'm going to add normal thermal paste. Obviously, we are not going back to liquid metal. It wouldn't make much sense with aluminum, right? That's why we are going to add Hydronaut. So it's a very long-term stable paste with a good performance and good handling capabilities. So I'm going to prepare all that. Prepared the card with new pads and also paste. One thing is left that we had some thermal putty on these chokes, like on these inductors before, making contact with this part of the fin stack on the cooler. But because we already took off 0.5 millimeter, there is pretty much nothing left. So I will just add a little bit of paste on these inductors as well. And then this should be fine. Card looks good, ready to go. The only thing I did not put back is this small plastic frame that was mounted on the GPU. I wasn't sure if it might collide with the like cutout we made in the aluminum. That's why I left it away for now. Going to put it on my system and then we're going to do a temperature check. This looks great. So far all good. Fans are spinning up. We can see some power consumption. This time, no explosions, no smoke. By the way, also for people that keep asking about wire view, it's not quite ready yet. Well, it's about to be ready for the market, but we are working on different kind of versions. This, for example, is the one times eight to one times eight pin version without the case, because there's going to be a case on top to make it look nicer. But yeah, it's going to be ready soon. I will update you on that once it's going to be close to availability. As a first impression and also check to see if the contact is good between the GPU and the cooler, I did 10 minutes of GPU-Z render test. So far, it seems to be all right. The card generally is not quiet. It's a pretty, pretty uh, loud card but with 73% fan speed, there is still headroom and we see GPU temperature of about 76 and hotspot as far as I can tell, with about 90 degrees Celsius should also be normal. That's not pretty cool, I would say literally, but should be all right on a technical level. We are running close to 100% TDP, so that should also be fine. I will now perform an additional like full hour of stability test and then we should be, yeah, we should be safe that the card is good. The 2060 passed one hour of testing, temperatures didn't change at all, so I would consider this card fixed, looks good to me. I will send it back to Michael, hope he will be happy about his card. I also hope it was interesting for you to see what kind of damage gallium can do to aluminium and also if there is a way to fix it. I also think that because the cooler was nickel plated, that this actually helped to minimize the damage on the aluminum because if there is no coating and the gallium ha can have direct contact um, to the aluminum, usually it looks much worse than this. So it was actually quite a mild case. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.